Okay, here are your gravity notes. This is part one of your gravity notes and next week we'll get on to part two. This week we're gonna focus on the difference between force due to gravity and acceleration due to gravity. So, uh, first off, you guys already know the difference between mass and weight. I know you know this because I watched all of your videos on the difference between mass and weight. So you guys know that mass is just the amount of matter that takes up an object, whereas weight has to do with both the mass of that object and the gravity that is acting on that object. A lot of you guys also even gave me this formula, Fg equals mg, which stands for force due to gravity, that's the Fg, force due to gravity, is equal to m times g, which is mass times gravity. So a lot of you guys already have that part as well. Basically what it comes down to is that without gravity, mass is just going to be floating around in space like this astronaut. But once gravity can actually act on a mass, then that mass can have weight. All right, so you should already know that the SI unit for mass is the kilogram, and a lot of you guys mentioned that in your videos. A lot of you guys also mentioned that the SI unit for weight is newtons. And remember that newtons is also the SI unit for force. It's the same for weight because weight is just a particular type of force. It's the force due to gravity. Just like a push or a pull is a force, or friction is a force, or the force, upward force of water is the buoyant force. All of those are just different types of forces and they all have the units Newton. Now, those are of course the SI units, standard international units, units recognized all over the globe for forces and for mass. Um, other units for mass, in the United States, we're usually going to refer to mass in pounds. More precisely, it is a pound mass, like pound dash mass. Um, whereas we refer to, for force, for weight, we refer to the pound force. And then another common uh, unit for mass is the slug. Well, not that common. You've probably never even heard of a slug before, but a slug actually is 32 pounds. And that is essentially a type of unit for mass. Um, another unit for weight that you might be familiar with is stone. Uh, I know at least in one of our classes we've talked about stone, that that is a unit that's commonly used in Great Britain, and it uh, represents 14 pounds. So it's a pretty big amount. So those are some different types of units that we use for mass and for weight, um, but the standard ones that we're going to be talking about are kilograms and for mass and newtons for weight. You might have noticed that pound mass and pound force seem like they're the exact same thing. They actually, in fact, are, at least if you're on Earth. If you start traveling to other places in the universe, like out in the middle of space, or uh, if you go to the moon or Jupiter or even the surface of the sun, then they don't exactly equal out. But if you're just on Earth because pound mass and pound force are calibrated on Earth to be the same, they will match up, but they won't match up in other places in the universe, just on Earth. So um, the force due to gravity versus the acceleration due to gravity. A lot of times um, people will just say the word gravity. They'll be talking about gravity and it's hard to tell if they're referring to the force due to gravity or acceleration due to gravity. And they're actually two completely different things. So I want to help explain the difference between them. So what the force due to gravity is, that's literally the definition of weight. Um, force due to gravity and weight refer to the exact same thing. If I talk about how heavy my mouse is, I'm talking about the force due to gravity that the mouse can exert down on my hand. Uh, this is a bag of coins, this has a much bigger force due to gravity than my mouse does. It's pushing more on my hand. So the force due to gravity and weight, those things mean the exact same thing. And we've already learned this formula. 
Um, so force due to gravity, weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. So now let's break down what acceleration due to gravity actually means. So your acceleration due to gravity, which it's either going to have um, the symbol in an equation, it'll either just be a lowercase g or it'll be this one, acceleration due to gravity, ag, kind of like how this one was fg. Um, the just plain old g is actually more commonly used and so that's going to be the one that I use is just a lowercase g. So it's a little bit easier than having to write ag every time. Anyway, acceleration due to gravity is how fast an object speeds up as it is pulled down towards the earth. And the rate is actually 9.81 meters per second squared. Very, very fast. Um, we don't have to be quite that precise. In fact, to make our math easier, we're just gonna go ahead and round this off to one significant figure. So that'll just be 10 meters per second squared. Okay, let's talk about what that actually means. When I say 10 meters per second squared, what I'm really saying is 10 meters per second every second. Okay, so as time goes by, the speed of an object is increasing by 10 meters per second each second that passes by. And if I want to convert 10 meters per second to miles per hour, that's actually 22 miles per hour. So over here in this table, what I want you to fill out is how fast would an object be moving as each second goes by. Go ahead and assume that the starting value for speed is zero meters per second or zero miles per hour. So notice if we're talking about meters per second, then we should be adding 10 meters per second as each second passes by. And then if we're talking about miles per hour, we should be adding 22 miles per hour as each second passes by. So I'd like you to go ahead and complete that piece. So checking your work, you should have, after one second, we're going 10 meters per second, then 20, then 30, then 40. Whereas in uh, miles per hour, we go zero, then 22, 44, 66, 88. So you can see how that speed is increasing as time goes by. And it's not like we're going zero, then we're going 10, then we're going, it's, it's a constant gradual, it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, it's, it's a constant gradual uh, increase as time goes by. So another way of thinking about this, um, I think a lot of times we think about acceleration in terms of things that aren't necessarily falling, but things that are moving forward. So I like to think about it in terms of sports cars. For example, um, a Corvette Stingray has a top acceleration of zero to 60 miles per hour in 2.7 seconds. That's the exact same acceleration that an object has when it is in free fall. That's assuming that, you know, it's not like a parachuter who has a great big parachute that can catch a lot of air or something that's going to slow it down. Um, or an object that's not falling through water that's going to be slowing it down. We're just talking about an object that doesn't have a whole lot of wind resistance. It's going to be able to accelerate downward at 2.7, uh, er, from zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds. So really, really fast uh, amount of acceleration. So, Let's summarize again the difference between force due to gravity and acceleration due to gravity. A force due to gravity, that's the actual force that is pushing on, uh, or rather pulling on up towards the Earth. And the acceleration due to gravity is how quickly those objects are speeding up. So a force is that pull, the acceleration is the speeding up. Okay, you might be wondering why um, did we have to go through all of this drama with the difference between mass and weight? 
Well, it really doesn't actually matter if we're just talking about objects on the earth because everything is going to be uh, affected by the same amount of gravity all over. Now, it's not actually gravity that's the same. Remember, we have to specify between force due to gravity and acceleration due to gravity. What's the same all over the planet is the acceleration due to gravity. Um, but because different objects are going to have different masses, force due to gravity will still be different. So let's take a look. Uh, yep. Remember, add this into your notes. Uh, that is 10 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration due to gravity everywhere on Earth. Now let's do a couple of examples. Um, when we're doing an example that the object is on Earth, we're, we can actually go ahead and rewrite this equation so that it is just Fg is equal to mass times 10 meters per second squared. And make sure that when we're writing our units that we're going to use newtons for force due to gravity, kilograms for mass, and meters per second squared, or just write literally m slash s with a little two for acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so for our first example, we have a bowling ball. Uh, this bowling ball is about 10 pounds, which is 4.5 kilograms. Now we want to figure out its weight in newtons. Well, to do that, we just need to know our mass in kilograms, multiply that times 10 meters per second squared, and that's going to give us our weight. So plug in Fg is equal to 4.5 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. That equals 45 newtons. Now, let's take a look at this next piece. Uh, we have a baseball, and a baseball, standard baseball, is 145 grams. And then we are going to calculate its weight in newtons. But if we just go ahead and put 145 grams into this value, we're going to have a number that is actually way too big because we need to have kilograms, not grams. So let's go ahead and convert this into kilograms. Remember that for every one kilogram, there's 1,000 grams. So that's three zeros. The way that I like to remember moving my decimal place around is if I have three zeros, that means I'm going to move three spaces. So what I can do is I can either, I know my decimal point is starting back here. Um, I'm either going to be moving my decimal point three places to the right, and then that would give me 0.145 grams, or I'm gonna move my decimal place three spaces to the right. Did I say right before? I'm getting my directions mixed up. Three spaces this way, and then I would have 145,000 kilograms. So the question is, which of those is going to be correct? Would it be more correct to say, or would the correct way to, to uh, switch this be, um, this is a big number of kilograms or a small number of kilograms, hopefully you realize that a baseball is more likely to be 0.32 pounds than 320,000 pounds. Yes, so uh, what you need to fill in is 0.145 kilograms. And if we then calculate the weight, we're going to plug in 0.145 kilograms times 10 that gives us 1.45 newtons. Okay, so the ratio is always going to be the same for all objects. We're going to just basically take whatever the mass is in kilograms, multiply it by 10, and that tells us the newtons. So it's really just multiply by 10. When we're talking about going from mass to weight, as long as you're using SI units. 
If you're not using SI units, then things are a little bit different. But SI units are great because then we can just multiply by 10. Of course, I like to just know what things are in pounds just so I have a good sense of reference because Newtons are kind of obscure and it's hard to know how heavy a Newton actually is. Um, so again, 45 Newtons, that's about 10 pounds. One and a half Newtons, about 0.32 pounds. Okay, so let's say that we go to the moon instead. On the moon, we have um, no longer an acceleration due to gravity of 10, we have an acceleration due to gravity that is 1.6 meters per second squared. So we still have the same amount of mass as before. Remember, mass doesn't change anywhere in the universe. Only weight changes. Only our force due to gravity changes. Okay, So we're still going to use 4.5 kilograms for my bowling ball and we're still gonna use 0.145 kilograms for my baseball, but instead of 10 meters per second squared, we're gonna plug in 1.6 meters per second squared in both of these. Then, if I calculate that, I have 7.2 newtons for my bowling ball and 0.23 newtons for my baseball. If I convert those masses now into pounds, notice I now have a 1.6 pound bowling ball and a baseball that is a 20th of a pound, 0 0.05 pounds. So things are a lot less heavy here because the gravity is less, but it's the same amount of mass. Now let's take a look at one more example. Whoop. For some reason that slide didn't load. I guess we'll just go to the last slide. Here we go. So let's say that we uh, take our bowling ball and baseball to the sun, uh, imagining that we would not burn up when we approach the sun. Um, we could have a bowling ball and a baseball close to the surface of the sun where the acceleration due to gravity is 274 meters per second squared. So about 30 times what it is here on Earth. Still, we have mass of 4.5 kilograms and 0.145 kilograms respectively, but we're multiplying by 274 in both of those cases now. So for the bowling ball, we get 1,233 newtons, and the baseball is about 40 newtons. 40 newtons is equal to nine pounds, and 1,233 newtons is about 280 pounds. So now our bowling ball is the size of a very large human, <laughs> and our baseball is about as heavy as the bowling ball was in the beginning when it was on Earth. So that's a little bit about force due to gravity and acceleration due to gravity and how they're related and how they're different from each other.